Welcome to our teaching clip. I am Bishop Ramon Di Maria, and I'm the pastor of Abundant Grace Church. The title of our teaching clip today is The Case for Christianity. To make a case for something is to explain convincingly why it is true or to be believed. This may be done in any number of ways. It involves looking at the evidence in support of something and considering its implications. This may also involve considering arguments opposed to it and analyzing what, if any, validity they may possess. My beloved, the case for Christianity is strong and convincing. Studying the arguments in favor of Christianity with an open mind can be a faith-building and truly life-changing experience. Such an analysis provides hope and encouragement not only as to this earthly life, but into eternity. Christianity as a system of belief is far and away superior to religious and inventions of man. It holds up extremely well by comparison. Consider a few of the major areas in which the case for Christianity is so convincing. First, Christianity makes sense. Matter of fact, it makes good sense, not only from a theoretical and philosophical standpoint, but in a very tangible and practical way. Christianity, unlike man-made systems, is a religion of reason and common sense. It presents the honest student with a logical, reasonable way of life. Paul said in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service. And be not fashioned according to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. My beloved, the word spiritual in Romans 12 and 1 translates in the American Standard Version to a word meaning of or belonging to the reason. That is, it pertains to our faculty of thinking, our reason. It is translated in the King James Version and the New King James Version with the English word reasonable. The gospel appeals to our understanding. It is a system of belief based not solely upon emotions, although there is an emotional element involved, but upon careful thought and reasonable conclusions. Second, the God of the Bible is infinitely above all of the gods of human creation. One of the telltale characteristics of the various religions invented by men down through the years is how their gods tend to reflect and look like the people and cultures who created them. They are of human origin, and they look all too human. My beloved, even the most enlightened cultures have created gods who pale by comparison to the God of the Bible. My Third, my beloved, Christianity is beneficial to mankind. Wherever its influence goes, Mankind benefits. Cultures touched by the influence of Christianity tend to fare much better than secular societies, so long as they persist in their adherence to biblical principles. A few examples will illustrate this point. A. A woman, unlike the creeds of men, the Bible is filled with noble women. Eve, the mother of all living beings, Abigail, the beautiful, intelligent, and wise wife. Esther, the queen who saved her people. Ruth, the loyal friend. Lydia, an example of hospitality. And the first Christian of Europe, the widow whose lowly might was the greatest contribution of them all. And Mary Magdalene, loyal to the Savior to the end. These and scores of others illustrate how women are depicted on the pages of the Bible. Their character is described in admirable and lofty terms. Their conduct is presented in a manner consistent with their good behavior. My beloved, any one, man or woman, can read their life stories and be inspired to imitate them. Also, my beloved, the doctrine of the Bible with regard to women elevates them to a high, imitable standard. Consider the worthy woman as described in Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 through 21. Matter of fact, just read it right to verse 31. In summary, she is rare, valuable, trustworthy, profitable, beneficial, vigilant, efficient, hardworking, well-organized, supervisory, 
wise, strong, perceptive, capable, compassionate, brave, well-endowed, supportive, optimistic, kind, hard-working, revered, and praiseworthy. This is a far cry from the way women are depicted in the creeds and doctrinal statements of man-made religions. Such depictions would have been revolutionary in man-made works only a few generations ago. B. Talk about men. When you stop and think about it, Christianity is the one thing which can give meaning and purpose to the life of a man. And you can read about that in Ecclesian, uh, excuse me, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13, and Job chapter 28 and verse 28. It confronts him with a lifetime challenge he needs in order to find ultimate fulfillment and happiness. The Bible presents man made in the very image of God himself. You can see that in Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 and 27. Many religions hold their gods at arm's length, something to be feared, even disdained. Yet the Bible describes the creation of man in a likeness of God, in his image. So in many ways, man is comparable to God. He is capable of great accomplishments, wonderful love and mercy, inventive prowess, and great progress. Christianity calls man to actually be more like God, who wants man to imitate him. It is one of the rare systems of belief which encourages men to assume a higher standard of living. So if you are a man, the gospel calls you to a higher plane of love, leadership, and respect for others. See, we're going to talk about children. Jesus said, Suffer the little children to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. You can read that in Luke chapter 18 and verse 16. Has it occurred to you that being childlike in heart is required to be a Christian? Amazingly, God not only cares about and protects children, but requires his followers to imitate them. This is one of the reasons why Christian people have such great natural abhorrence toward the common practice of abortion. They have been, in the word of God, a glimpse of the precious value of a child. My beloved, as men, we should see the value that God stresses upon a child. My beloved, there is no reason for anyone to abort a child. See, men see the child's personhood, moral value, personal worth, and most of all, purity. The child yet unborn is the ultimate image of hope, promise, and prospect for the human family. Christianity does not underestimate children. It embraces and looks to them with admiration. If you, my beloved, are a child at heart, the gospel calls you to a life of purity, innocence, and happiness. D, we're going to talk about the poor, the oppressed, and the downtrodden. The Bible shows us God's concern for the needy. You can read that in Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 22, and James chapter 1 and verse 27. This concern reflected in the ancient harvesting laws for ancient Israel is alive and well in the Christian dispensation. All around the globe, churches of Christ are actively sheltering and protecting the needy, as envisioned and planned by God. The poor you have with you always, but only in Christianity do we find a completely workable plan for caring for them. Take away the compassionate principles of Christianity, and the poor become hordes to be manipulated, abused, and ultimately destroyed. If you are a widow, an orphan, poor, weak, oppressed, neglected, prejudiced, or underprivileged, the gospel calls you to a life of honor and respect. E, let's talk about the imperfect, the mistaken, the lost. My beloved, the church is not a haven or country club for the perfect, but a hospital for the forgiven. Romans chapter 5 and verses 6 to 9 read, For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his love toward us. In that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath 
through him. My beloved, when the Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Corinth, he knew they were ridden with problems. Yet, because of the influence of the gospel in their lives, there was great hope. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you have been washed, but you have been sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Please read that verse over again or listen to this teaching over again. You can read it in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 9 through 11. So my beloved, Christianity is the one system of belief which can make you a better person. It appeals to your higher nature. It calls you from a life of sin and slavery to a life of forgiveness, justification, and hope. It bespeaks a way of life far above anything you have imagined before. In conclusion, allow me to say that the case for Christianity is strong and convincing. This cannot be truly said of the dreamy confusions of mysticism, the vacuum of Buddhism, the rituals of Hinduism, or the ravages of Islam. Christianity appeals to one's heart and soul, one's higher being. It appeals to the truth. So my beloved The next time you or someone you know begins to doubt the value of Christianity or is tempted to feel like one religion is as good as another, remember what Christianity is. Remember that it makes sense and that it makes people better, more like the amazing God who created them. Thank you, my beloved, for listening to this teaching clip today. My beloved, I hope that it spoke to your spirit today. The title has been the case for Christianity. Please listen to it over and over again. I know I just, on a a couple of the words, I may have erred somewhat, but I did make the correction. So my beloved, please know that Christianity is a religion that will move the world, that will honor God, and that will meet every need that the world has. Thank you for listening, and thank you for your attention today. I am Bishop Ramon Di Maria, and I'm the pastor of Abundant Grace Church.